So, how does a worn-out old man manage to hook up his car to his motorhome all by himself in a cold, lonely world? <laughs> well, I'll show you. As with any towed vehicle, you need to have the uh, taillights or lights working so that people know when you're turning and stopping. One option is uh, the uh, internal lights, and that requires disassembling the original taillight, drilling a hole, and putting in additional lighting and running the wire underneath to the front on a jack. That's kind of complicated for me. So what I did was so my car has got this little shelf back here. So what I did is I got this uh, piece of wood, shaped it to the size of it, and put some metal plates here from an electrical box, and then got, well my sister got me some uh, magnetic mount lights for me. Just mounts on there. They're LED, so they're really bright. And I just wired it. Uh, well, just left the wire hanging here. And yeah, this is a uh, solar panel. I use it to maintain my car battery voltage because, uh, well, when I'm on the road, there are days and sometimes weeks when I don't even have to uh, drive or start the engine. It's got, you know, regular controller plugs into a cigarette lighter that I installed. All I have to do with the uh, trailer wiring is pull it out, close the door on it, then all I have to do open up the hood And then I just feed it through here. Put the uh, wiper blade on top of it to hold it in place. Then I keep the uh, cable good place and near the center of the vehicle. Then I can just close it down on top of it and it'll stay put. Make sure that my cable is out of the way for the next step. Before I go on to the next step, we have to uh, go to the hitch receiver here. And what I do before I go north for the summer or head south for the winter is I take some heavy automotive grease and I coat the ball. And that's because I don't want metal grinding on metal. Of course, this should be done with uh, whether you're towing a car, a trailer, or even on a fifth wheel, you need to uh, grease up the hitch really good. This next step is kind of tricky. What I have to do is, I have to get my tow bar up close to where I need them to be, and then sort of let them sit on the uh, mounting posts here while I, uh, well, I need to uh, get a little bit of grease on the uh, pins, and then sort of delicately get one side in place, put the pin in, lock it into place, and that side's done. You have to do the same thing with the other side.
Now, most people, well, some people, use uh, safety chains to hook up their tow vehicle to their motor vehicle, motor home. But uh, they tend to drag and wear out. So what I did, I got myself a tow cable, and not just a tow cable, but the kind that loops around the arm of the tow bar. That way, it doesn't drag, and uh, it's easy to find because it's right there. And when it comes to towing a vehicle, you got to have a lot of safety in place. Now while I have the uh, tow bar in this position, I can take my, my trailer wire and uh, Velcro strip that I buy in rolls, and I can just simply attach the trailer wire to the tow bar, just like that. Now I can position the tow bar in its first position. That's up like this. Now don't worry, I put some this felt pads on here where it touches the body so it won't get damaged. Now I can just take my other Velcro strap and attach the upper part of the trailer wiring. Now I should let you know that uh, installing the frame for the tow bar on a vehicle is not for the faint of heart. In fact, I needed a little bit of help to uh, put this frame on since it was uh, kind of an evolved situation. And at the time, uh, the only frame that would fit this car was blue lock, so I went with that. And you may notice that this tow bar is a little different than what you may have seen on other vehicles. Well, that's because, well, first of all, I'm cheap. <laughs> Second of all, the uh, tow bars that have the adjustment pieces in here are really expensive. So I decided to go with this one, even though it uh, requires a bit more work to install and hook up. Now here's the secret to hooking up the car to the motorhome by myself. The rope and a hook. Now this isn't just a standard nylon rope, and it's not a twine nylon rope. Twine would have scraped the uh, body and nylon would have been a little slippery. This is a uh, weave cloth, so it's uh, smoother and I can get a grip on it. So I just hook the uh, rope around here and then I just run it along the uh, driver's side door open it up, and then I can do the stuff inside. Now I make sure that the car is parked directly behind the motorhome, uh, relatively close, so I don't have to do a lot of steering. And on the rope, I've got a knot. And that tells me not to go past this part when I'm tying it onto the steering wheel. So I just make a loop, go over, a twist through the opening, tighten it down, and I'm ready for the next part. Now you may be able to guess what I'm going to do with the rope, but you're kind of might be wondering how I'm going to get this to get over onto the motorhome. Well, that's why I've got the rope tied to the steering wheel. All I have to do is have it hanging out there far enough so that uh, it, I can drop it down with the rope. 
as with any operation, you have to have the right tools to do it right. So, one of my best tools for doing this is this. It's a convex mirror with magnetic base on it. The, the mirror kind of rotates at an odd angle so that you can uh, get the angle just right. I uh, got this from when I had my little mini trailer. I kept it and it's come in useful. So what I do is right over the center of the hitch, I magnetic mount it to the uh, bumper and I adjust my mirror so that I get a good angle when I'm uh, looking through. Now this mirror helps me when I'm getting the hitch aligned left to right, forward to back. But it's a little difficult uh, with elevation, so I just have to kind of guess at that. Now keep in mind, this car has got a standard transmission. That means it can be flat towed, that is without a tow dolly. So, what I have to do is start the engine. I leave the door open to get the the uh, rope to move. You know, put it into first gear, release the brake, and then I untie the rope. Lower the tow bar and move forward until I get to the uh, hitch. And then I look at the uh, mirror on the back of my motorhome to align everything up. Now I can lash it down. Now the, the uh, hitch does come with a weird little pin, but that's not very good. That's why I've got a locking system. Put the latch down, put the locking pin through, put the lock on, and that's not going to come off. Now keep in mind, when I first got this hit, this uh, tow bar, this was kind of a loose system, so I had to go underneath and tighten a bolt so it would have more pressure. But now, it's just a matter of disconnecting the rope, connecting the uh, tow cables. Now I cross them left to right, right to left, and then my trailer cables, I just plug them into the uh, four-way connector on the back. I just have to uh, double check everything and uh, I'm pretty much ready to go. It's just that simple. Well, if you call that simple. And then when I reach my location, when I want to disconnect the car, I uh, pretty much reverse the situation except I won't need the uh, mirror and I won't need the rope. Just uh, disconnect the trailer wiring, disconnect the cabling, remove the pin on the lock, lift it up, that will loosen the pins on the front here. Just uh, hold them out and I can store my tow bar against my motorhome if necessary. So that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, I hope this is helpful for anyone that uh, is worrying about how they're going to tow their car and how they're going to hook it up all by themselves out here in the uh, middle of nowhere. <laughs>